all due respect to Edwardsville, but holy crap, look at this theater. This is awesome. <laughs> so excited. See you guys after. Bye. Far out. Hi, everyone. We're freaking out. Uh, in out. Far out. Hi, everyone. It's me, Grant, the movie and TV guy. Welcome to Raising Popcorn with Grant, everybody. Um, we're here to talk about a movie. Movies and TV that we do here, and that movie is. I had to travel a little ways to see it. This review is running a little behind. Sorry about that. That movie is Moon Age Daydream. Uh, Moon Age Daydream is, uh, I'm going to remember this time, I forgot on Confess Fletch. For those who didn't read, uh, the director of Confess Fletch was Greg Matola. I apologize for forgetting that, I, I've never done that. Alright, I always want to give the, the filmmakers credit. Uh, okay, so Moon Age Daydream is directed by Brett Morgan. He is a very prolific uh, documentarian. He previously did films such as um, Chicago 10, as well as... Um, a Kurt Cobain montage of Hack, which were both quite good, and now he uh, is sort of kind of making history. He's doing the first sanctioned film, documentary, what have you, of David Bowie. Um, he is very, 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 um, he and his estate are very, very stingy about how, very selective about what they give out. And uh, they basically open the vaults for Brit Morgan. So what is Moon Age Adrian about? It's basically the the greatest, trippiest supercut ever. It's two hours and twenty minutes of pure uncut uh, Bowie. It's uh, looked not so much as life and his art as sort of the the aura of Bowie. It's it's basically again like a long montage, essentially going from you know, particularly the time in his life when he was most on top, uh, primarily when he was first starting out, all the way up to like the nineties with some little things after, but mostly in that period. And uh, it's just sort of um, a sort of triptych about Bowie's career. We see a little of this, a little of that. Uh, we see concert footage. We see music video footage. There's no there's no uh, traditional narrator. There's no talking heads. Um, when they do choose to speak, however, they do do sound bites from interviews that Bowie has had. But they don't have like there's never a moment they have even in like really great uh, music documentaries like Summer of Soul or The Sparks Brothers a moment where say I don't know you know, Brian Henson going, like, my dad had such a good time with him making Labyrinth or something. It's it's literally just visuals, um, archival footage of him, concert footage of him, uh, paintings he did, uh, little animations they throw in, um, footage that Bowie shot, footage shot of Bowie, and it's sort of all in this sort of, um, in glorious IMAX. I saw his movie in IMAX today. Um, as you could probably get a taste of from the, my little uh, first of the double intro that I put on. If it worked, that is. If not, then I'm full of shit and I don't know why I said that. But basically, yeah, I saw it in Glorious IMAX. And um, I feel like this review is just going to be me saying, of course it's great because it's a David Bowie documentary. That's basically true. Um, I fucking love Moon Age Daydream. I feel like if you drop acid, this is a perfect movie for you. <laughs> because, I'll tell you this though, if you're epileptic, you might not want to see this in a theater. <laughs> there is a lot, right, early and often, there's a lot of strobing, and there's a lot of quick cuts, and a lot of loud sounds, and a lot of loud images. But it's very, very, um, and some annoying people, we'll get to that. Yeah, we have, we have one today. Um, but it's just great. The music is great, of course. Uh, the footage is great. And despite the fact that it is very much approved by the estate, and it is, you know, hagiography, first off, it's David Bowie, of course it is, no matter who you make it. But the other thing is, that doesn't mean there's no insights. There's some really great uh, moments of this footage of Bowie. For instance, um, there's one that's done with animation with his voiceover where he discusses um, his half-brother, who apparently suffered, suffered from mental illness, and we see it sort of illustrated in animation the way that he kind of saw the brain of his of his uh, late of his late brother really terrific stuff and him talking about his relationship with uh, his family and which was maybe not the best in the world um and yes there's stuff they leave out um which is maybe the closest thing i have to a minor flaw is that i know that no two and a half hour movie could pr perfectly encompass bowie his his discography but 
really, you're not going to mention that his son directed Moon. You're not going to, you know what I mean? The Duncan Jones' is his son. You're not going to, you're not going to, and also you're not going to play Under Pressure or Ziggy Stardust. Like, what? At least, if they did, it was like quick, like montage form, like little snippets. But despite that, those are minor quibbles for a movie that is exactly what you want from it and more. It's original, it's experimental, it's offbeat, a little off-center, funny, weird, it's just like its subject, and David Bowie would love this movie, and I love this movie, and... Man, I'm gonna do it again. Yeah, you see it. Bang. Five out of five stars for Moon Age Daydream. What a trip. I mean, really, and... I got to see it in IMAX theater. It was a slightly different IMAX theater than I'm used to. I've, I've never been to this one before. It's in, um, I've been to the theater, mind you, but I've never I've been to I've been to the Ronnies multiple times. We've never been in the IMAX before, so this was quite an experience. Um, I didn't know that in some and honestly, no shade to my other theater. I think the IMAX was a little better there, which is you know better. Even the sound was a little more heightened. Um, so yeah, but uh, yeah, and they do a thing in that one. I I didn't know that this was a. What the fuck? Why is my why did my battery just drop like fifty percent? I need to get a new phone. Uh, luckily, there were not enough previews for me not to remember all of them. So, um, but yeah, it, basically uh, the IMAX if the IMAX will go on either side of this place, and when the lights go down, um, the sign is lit up. But then when it goes down, uh, the, the IMAX letters shut off. I thought that was kind of neat. Um, yeah. So, um, all right. Uh, five five stars for Moon Age Daydream. Let's close the book on it. Trailer trash. Um, we did have a few, but a few. Uh, Black Panther: Wakanda Forever. Uh, I talked about it. Looks good. Um, Avatar: The Re-release, which I'm seeing Friday here in town in IMAX 3D. Uh, for the retro review, have not seen it in the theater in 13 years, and have not seen it period in about 12. So this will be fun. Um, and then um uh. After that, we had Black Adam. And then finally, I believe this is the last one. Let me just double check. A Triangle of Sadness, which we talked about before. It looks really, really good. It won the Palme d'Or. Um, and it was their shmarma. There were no scenes, but there was additional um, audio narration after the credits that was uh, worth waiting around for. More, There was a little more Bowie. Let's just put it this way. A little more Bowie's voice at the end. Um, all right. Now we have uh, this weekend, Knowing Moviegoers. Uh, let's end this video on the right foot by venting a little bit. Um, now, I know that IMAX is a relatively new phenomenon for some people. I get it. Not everyone goes all the time. It's not the first time, but I am sorry, people. First off, I need to mention this. People were seat jumping a lot in this movie. I don't know if they were just getting ants in the pants, and these are like grown men. I was the youngest person in the theater by at least, or roughly the same age as, I guess, one other guy. Um... See, Jim, not a lot of people in theaters, maybe like a handful, which was too bad, but they were moving around a lot. There was a woman, she was already talking coming in, and she was like a couple rows behind me. Now, mind you, the IMAX was extra loud at, at this place, so it kind of drowned it out. But here's the uh, here's the thing. It didn't drown it out when people talked. It drowned it out when they were singing. And she already comes in, and she's talking to the guy I overheard her, and she's like, Oh, I'm sorry for making such a big stink there. I'm really glad you you, you brought me in. I'm like, oh god, this is going to be trouble. And it was. Oh, so what is an IMAX? You know, she clearly has never been. And it's like, well, it's really loud. Like, oh, oh, I hope it's not too loud. Movie starts, gets loud. There's going to be a slight break in the song. Oh, gee, that's loud. Okay. He performs, um... Uh, all the young dudes. Oh, gee, that's loud. Forms Moon Age Daydream. Oh, gee, it, it, if that gets any louder, it, like, if that keeps being loud, I'm gonna have to go go tell someone to, to turn it down. I gotta go tell the manager to turn it down. Like, and then, uh, sings, I don't know, sings, a uh, little bit of changes comes on, kind of loud, concert footage. Oh, gee, that's loud. Honey, I told you it'd be loud. They're saying this out loud. <laughs> gee, I told you that. He's being interviewed by Dick Cavett, so there's no music going on. I'm just glad it's not loud again. I'm just like, shut the fuck up! <sighs> For God's sake, Karen, don't buy an iMac.
tax ticket then. And if it's too loud for you, guess what? There's the door. Stop talking. I'm trying to listen to David Bowie talking. Stop talking. Like, seriously, I didn't say that I wanted to. Just seriously, people, like... I know that you're used to your privilege here, but you're not in your movie theater, lady. Like, stop, to, or not in movie theater. You're not, you're in movie theater, you're not in your living room, lady. Shut up! We didn't pay, we didn't pay 15 fucking dollars to hear you give your audio commentary on how loud the movie is. Shut the fuck up! And seven, like, it was like 17 times throughout the whole movie. The movie's two and a half hours. Just leave, and then she does leave. Two minutes before the credits roll. That was just so tempting. Just, like, just seriously. Stop it. Stop it. Hate people like that. I hate their that behavior. It just makes me so angry. It's like you're grown adults. Act like it. Fuck's sake. Anyway. I said my piece. So, um, yeah. That's it. <laughs> Thanks for indulging me there for a second. Um... It was great. Go see Moon Age Daydream. Just try to go see it in a theater with less annoying people if you can. All right, but definitely see it in IMAX. Oh my god, the IMAX is some of the best I've ever seen. So, um, that's great. Uh, we will be back later on this week. We'll have reviews of Meet Cute uh, on Wednesday. Don't worry, darling, on Thursday. Um, Friday, we're going to check out Avatar. We might have other stuff this weekend. I know we're, this weekend at some point we're going to check out uh, A Jazz Man's Blues. Um, I keep forgetting the other one. I put it in edit, on the come up. Okay, on the come up. Uh, the next week we will have a pretty packed week. We're gonna have reviews on Tuesday. Uh, play catch up on the movie A Love Song. We'll also have a review of Rob Zombie's The Monsters. Um, Blonde, starring Ana de Armas, which will be our first NC seventeen rated film for the channel. Um, should be interesting. Um, Thursday we will also have reviews. Next Thursday of um. I keep your smile. Uh, Friday, this isn't scary. Friday, uh, we'll have a review of Bros, which is terrific. Uh, Billy Eichner liked my post. Thanks, Billy Eichner. Um, we'll have a review of Bros. We'll also have a review of The Greatest Beer Run Ever, Hocus Pocus 2, and more. Uh, that'll all be next time. And until next time, I'm Grand the Movie and TV Guy. I see it all. I'm happy to share it with you. I love you all. I appreciate you all. I love your class Mr. the 3000. Be kind to one another. If you like this video, give it a like if you want to. Give it a subscribe if you want to. Give it the bell. I don't know what it does. That's supposed to do. Or so I've been told. Uh, let's try to get it up to 200. We're almost there. And maybe we'll do a special video. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, or so I've been told. Uh, and uh, leave a comment. Even if it's, hey Grant, I like waffles. It really helps out. Um, and uh, if you want to find me else for reviews, this and other fun stuff, you can check me out on Letterboxd.com at Raise on Popcorn with Grant, Facebook, Raise on Popcorn with Grant. You can also uh, check out uh, what I'm watching on TV right now on Serialized. I am all one word, um, all lowercase, Raised on Popcorn. You can also find me, uh, my podcast on Spotify and Anchor. Uh, some, of it, some of you already have, but even if you haven't, uh, take care of yourself, take care of your mental health. It's incredibly important. And I want to know down below, what did you think of Moon Age Daydream? Did you like the movie? Did you hate the movie? Think my beans good? Think I'm full of shit? Comment below, let me know. And until we meet again, we're all reason popcorn. Make my own extra butter. Get you guys next time. Take care. Bye.